So, okay. Uh, my name is Matos Pessoa. I'll be reporting problem number 15, poor sand castles. So the problem asks us to, with some of these specifications, to estimate what is the maximum height we can achieve by a construction method considering a water to a two centimeter depth and also uh, fall, the, the, sand, the, the sand is falling from a height of about 40 centimeters. And we need to know what is the maximum height we can achieve by this construction method and what are the most important parameters controlling that maximum height. So uh, first, when we, are, when we are adding water to the sand, uh, we can consider three different uh, important regimes, for example, uh, according to the saturation of that sand. So uh, from order of about 20%, we have a pendular regime, which is just a, a small amount of water. We have a funicular regime, and also we have a capillary uh, regime. Uh, but our problem works only w w with those two, the funicular and the capillary one, because we need an important thing that will be discussed further on in our presentations. So whenever we have a dry surface, uh, you will have only a simple piling with the adhesion forces considering the, the top of the plate, for example, we are piling. But when we have a flat surface, and I'm sorry here, but there is a surface here we, we can't uh, just see by the, the animation, uh, we are also considering the cohesion forces. And those cohesion forces, will be the important thing in our problem to study. Uh, so we have an inhibition process, which will cause a negative matrix section, which, which is basically what? Uh, considering a, a capillary tube approximation, we can take, for example, two grains of sand. Uh, and since I've said before, we have water between those two. And we have a different pressure between two points of these grains. Uh, and this will cause a negative matrix suction. So you have a capillary effect that will be so important for our problems since uh, we'll talk early on. And uh, we can also study it by simply solving the Navier-Stokes equations in this way. Uh, but I'm, I'm just showing this because uh, the results tells us that this uh, water will rise uh, when we have that kind of interference and difference between two pressures. So uh, now considering a capillary rise, uh, another more simpler explanation for this is just taking uh, the important parameters here, and we can find the height at which uh, the, the water can actually uh, go up. Uh, and when we take this equation here, for example, and considering uh, some values for water, we can reach a, fi a critical size, for example, considering uh, a theta in our capillary tube approximation, which is almost zero, we can reach uh, to this equation here. And this equation is telling us exactly just that what is important to our problem? The size of the grain will be important to our problem. So this is why we're in our experimental analysis, we will focus on that. Uh, so another thing which is really important is uh, exploring the capillary effect using the packing fraction and how it will affect the maximum heights that the, the, the sand castle will achieve. So for example, you have a simple cubic pa uh, packing, which is simply the minimum you can achieve whenever you consider this distance here as being the distance between the center of the grain and the void between many grains, and you also have the 3 tetrahedral backing, which is the maximum one can achieve. And why is this important? Because we can build uh, an equation that will tell us exactly what is the range of the height that we will achieve experimentally. So for example, uh, just considering some of those parameters and considering uh, two types of sand that we will use experimentally from do, uh, dot 15 and dot 30 uh, millimeters, we'll, we'll have that the, these uh, these maximum heights will be between those two ranges. So minimum of seven uh, for the small one and maximum of uh, 20 for the other uh, radius of the grain we are using. Uh, so about the growth dynamics, uh, there is a paper which is really important that studies these properties. So whenever you consider a volume of sand reaching a base of, of, a, uh, of a plate and going up, we have a piling. and the whole dynamics can be described by considering this function here, which is actually what the problem is asking us. They, it's asking us to uh, estimate the maximum height. So to know the maximum height, we have velocity to which it will grow, considering this probability of sticking, which is explored further on in the paper, and also the velocity of the sandcastle rise, and also this packing fraction that we've mentioned before, which is dependent on the size of the grain. So which is, this is why it's so important to vary these kinds of things. Uh, so how do we do? things experimentally, well, we did not have naturally uh, a 0.15 or 0.30 millimeters sand to, to explore. So what we did was granulometry to understand our sand. So this is the result, for example, for a general sand we used. Uh, so it gives us a percentage of how much of the of size we have of, of each and every one of them. So we were able to separate uh, these 
these uh, the sands, the general sand, into small pieces. For example, of dot 15 or dot 30, and this is why uh, we are using these in our experimental analysis. Uh, so, now, oh, the most important thing here that we'll show in our that I want to show in our presentation is this graph. Uh, which tell us uh, how this height will depend in function of time. And it's important to say that here we do not have only one phenomenon, not the, only the stalagmites rise. We also have the whole base of the sand going up, the whole pile of sand. So here we have uh, the values for dot 30 millimeters and dot 15 millimeters, and we can see that there is a limit uh, to each of those uh, stalagmites rise for both of these two graphs and also when we normalize this to know the general behavior we obtain also a curve that will tell us uh, exactly how uh, the whole the whole structure will also be going up so this is a really interesting and really important experimental uh, thing we obtained uh, and we can mag we can find the maximum value for both of these growths uh, based on our assumptions that is that we're dealing with two effects as we've seen here so we're dealing with both the size of the stalagmites and also the size of the base they're they're both growing so we need we have limits for both of these uh, and if we want to find exactly those two uh, those two limits which the problem asks us we can simply uh, define the the functions which re represent these two and then we'll know exactly so this is a really important uh, parameter we obtained uh, and so, how do we establish the maximum height? Either considering the improving the base or, and how it will grow, for example, and also the stalagmite itself. So these are two phenomena that can be studied. So the complete uh, problem investigation, as I've shown before, there is a paper that tells us uh, we have this parameters here to fit for the, the growth. And experimentally, we have done the same. And this is how we obtained uh, this graph for the growth of both the, the base and also the, of the stalagmites itself. And this is why it's so interesting. And here are the parameters we have obtained for those, uh, the, for those parameters uh, that are on the paper too. So uh, we also can study another uh, general thing since we have uh, basically told you how it will happen in the general case and what is really more important. But for a same can, sand castle with a general sand not separated by granulometry, we can see that whenever we increase the, the rate in which the, the sand is falling, we have a smaller, uh, smaller size of, of, of sand castles in the end. Uh, this, these are our experimental setup. These are our experimental results. And also here, uh, we, ah, these graphs are, are not really beautiful, but I don't know, the color is not working. Uh, but what we see here, for example, is for five different experiments, uh, considering uh, the general sand in these two cases, and uh, a, a sand that was separated with dot 30 and dot 15. And what we can see here is that the sand castle sites for a same uh, rate of fall of these grains, whenever you don't have the smallest of those, uh, those falls, you can see that the 15 will grow up, far, uh, we grow more than the other ones, which is something that we also had obtained uh, back here when we talked about in these graphs, see, in these two cases. Uh, so, further on, we can also study, uh, just to tell you more about, uh, whenever you think about building something, you're also thinking about, well, will it be stable? Well, you wanna talk also about, uh, how these structures will interact with each other. So, uh, as I said before, we have three of those regimes, uh, and we can also, with the geotechnical engineering uh, stuff, we can also study them uh, mechanically. So, for example, uh, there are three regimes also in this case. We have a pendular ten tension, considering that uh, simply small sizes of, of uh, simply small amount of water. We also have a, the capillary tension, and also we have a funicular tension. Ju this is just to illustrate how it will look like. And this is uh, a simulation of the tensile strength, uh, uh, strength in function of the degree of saturation. So this is why when you put water into your sand, it feels like it might be more, uh, uh, more strong than it actually is, but this is just uh, 
uh, apparent cohesion effect. It's not the whole effect you're missing. And these are the graphs for, uh, for example, considering the palatal part, the funicular part, and the capillary part in the degree of saturation. Uh, so in conclusion, we have some important parameters, such as the rate of fall of the grain. And it's important that we had uh, studied before. Uh, these are two different phenomena, which we can ob obtain experimentally. Uh, good results matching the theory and everything. Oh, okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Krikori, I'm from Team Ukraine, and now I'm going to pose the, uh, to pose the solution of problem number 15, uh, 15 Pulinus and Castle, uh, and according to the statement of the problem, reporter needed to uh, investigate how the maximal height of the St. Castle depends on relevant parameters of the, uh, of the, uh, of the setup. Uh, first of all, let's start from theoretical investigation of the reporter. Uh, at first, the reporter gave a qualitative explanation uh, where he said about the different regimes of the, uh, of the attraction force between the, between the particles of the sand, uh, and the, that this force uh, strongly depends on the concentration of water between the particles. Uh, and indeed, uh, as, you ca as we can see from uh, reality, uh, these forces uh, are non-linear, and it leads to the different, uh, to the different heights of the of the set castle uh, in reality. Uh, then, uh, in theoretical investigation, the reporter uh, wrote down a theory which describes this, uh, this process. Uh, and also, uh, a reporter from these, uh, from these considerations found the distribution of uh, concentration of water with height, uh, using which uh, he found the uh, found the, uh, uh, how the height of the sand castle depends on time. Uh, and also, uh, yes, a uh, reporter investigated uh, this dependence, but the problem is that uh, reporter's theory uh, predicts algorithmic growth of the height, uh, and this uh, uh, the height of the of the sand castle will increase to infinity. But in reality, the height of sand castle the sand castle uh, breaks, uh, and it starts to grow uh, one more time, and so the height of the sand castle uh, limit, uh, is limited by some parameters about which reporter haven't mentioned. Uh, and I think that uh, it is a very important question that we need to discuss uh, during the polemics. Uh, and uh, now let's move on to experimental investigation of the reporter. Uh, at first, reporter studied the dependence of uh, height on time, and uh, indeed we saw that the height of time uh, decreases and it stabilizes, it doesn't increase to infinity, uh, and then, and then uh, the sand castle falls and start to grow uh, uh, up one, one more time, but experimental technique uh, haven't uh, explained during the report. We saw experimental setup only further after the report, uh, and indeed it was hard to understand how reporter measured uh, main parameters of the problem, for example, mass rate, and how the reporter gets such a big uh, uh, errors on, on the mass rate and, and other parameters of the system. Uh, and. Uh, then uh, reporter investigated the main uh, dependencies in this problem. Uh, he investigated the dependence of uh, height on a mass rate. Uh, indeed, we could see that the maximal height decreases, uh, and reporter explained it by the heats of the of the grains, and that uh, these heats leads to the destabilization of the uh, of the tower and its collapse. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so our team thinks that reporter. Uh, the reporter were really good investigated the dependence of uh, concentration of water and the pressure inside the uh, inside the inside the castle, but the maximal height haven't investigated uh, theoretically really good, but experimentally, uh, indeed, the reporter investigated this maximal height depending on most relevant parameters. Uh, during the discussion, I first of all uh, want to uh, want to discuss the reasons of the fall of the uh, of the castle and why does the height not increase to the infinity. Uh, also. I want to discuss the dependence of this maximal height on different parameters of the system, which we haven't uh, discussed in the report, uh, and also influence of the cross-section uh, of the hole uh, and the vessel, because reporter investigated the dependence only on the mass rate, uh, but we understand that as we change the, the cross-sectional area, also the push and force, which leads to the collapse of the, uh, of the sand castle, may change. Uh, so, thank you for your attention. Uh, and uh, at first, uh, I want to discuss uh, with you the reasons of the fall of the tower. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yes. 
Why does this castle fall? Well, imagine that you have a, a as we have here, we have uh, an amount of water here, and we, we are piling yeah. the same castle. So at first, what happens experimentally, and I'm sorry I didn't show these graphs for you, uh, but this uh, whole part here is filled with, with uh, sand, for example, and then we start to see this little stalagmite here that then yeah. will, will fall out. Uh, because, and this is due uh, uh, simply due to those uh, tensile uh, strength uh, uh, yeah. approximations that I've mentioned afterwards. Because this is only uh, an apparent cohesion. It's not a cohesion that will last forever. And whenever yeah. you are increasing heights, at the same time you're increasing heights, you cannot guarantee that at the tip of this uh, stalagmite you will have as much as saturated water you will need to obtain uh, in order for it to, to continue growing. So this yeah. is why it hey. doesn't uh, grow infinitely. And it, what interestingly, yes. this falls and then falls a new and forms a new base. And this base has uh, uh, water too. And then this um, this is why those two yes. effects are correlated mm -hmm. to each other. So at the same time, at the same time, this base is growing. We also have the growing of yes. the tip of the uh, about the about the top uh, part of the of the pile. Yeah. Uh, as I understand. Uh, uh, due to due to pressure at the at the top, due to falling of the sand, uh, there is some kind of force which uh, also may lead to the collapse of the yeah. of the tower. Yeah, uh, and this is why, for example, when we need when we have a more mass yes. rate uh, falling on the tip of here, it, it will cause uh, these force will cause it to collapse too. So this is yes. why you also need a small uh, rate because it, then you when you pile it grain by grain uh, in our imagination, yeah, yeah, grain by grain, it it can. Uh, rise more but uh, experimentally that's really hard yes. to obtain uh, and about uh, what another parameters limit this uh, this height uh, not only this yeah. rate uh, yeah yeah of course not because but what's hard is to justify exactly what is depending but and this is because when it reaches whenever you're reaching a, a higher uh, place in your sand castle the packing fraction will also change. It would not remain the same. Yeah. So experimentally, the packing fraction will also obtain, as I, and as I shown yes, yes. Uh, in our graphs, those tensions, they will also change. And then here, the packing fraction will be uh, will not be the minimum one, will be the, the more yes. uh, to the maximum one. So this is why you can't uh, actually have. So, uh, yes. uh, and experimentally, what we did uh, after we, it grew, after it grew, uh, we tried taking the tip of that and measuring the mass and the relation between mass and the water in these cases. Uh, and we did not have great results to show uh, in, uh, but. Yes. Uh, like, yeah. uh, as we consider this, uh, this top part, yeah. uh, as I understand, it falls due to sleeping at some cross section. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, as I understand, yeah. this, uh, this force depends not only uh, on uh, a sleeping friction also due to the cohesion. Cohesion we can observe this. Yeah. As this falling. As I understand, in your problem, cohesion is not is nonlinear because of uh, for small uh, for small amounts of water we we have uh, we have stuck particles and for higher amounts it will sleep. Uh, have you investigated the uh, the optimal parameters which uh, under which we get uh, an optimal height? So maybe qualitatively, what what, uh, what concentration of water we we need to use to. Uh, to have oh. a maximal height. Okay, you have a minimum uh, because you have to reach some kind of saturation, so you have yeah. to have a more amount of water than amount of sand. Uh, and also the problem limits us to one liter of, of sand only, yes, so this yes. is why we did that. But this is what you're talking here, perhaps can be related to the more coulomb, uh, yes, yes. to the more coulomb angle, because uh, the more coulomb angle tells you uh, how this tension here will uh, change in function of applied pressure. So it would come, ha come out somewhat like this, uh, and the yes. in geotechnical engineering, you have all of those graphs that tells you how uh, how it yes. will change in function of applied pressure. And we have these kinds of data, but since they they were not uh, so important but for us. As I understand, you haven't uh, investigated this in your theory, uh, like the the, the, the optimal pre the maximal pressures which leads to the collapse of the of the tower. Yeah, like experimentally, that's really hard to obtain uh, because uh, we also have different amount of concentration of water in this. In this uh, in this sense, so to isolate each and every parameter, that's really tough to do. So this is why we went on to yeah. a experimental like, approximation. Uh, I think that it may, it may very uh, very good improve your solution if we if you uh, take it into account. Right. My name is Shantanu Kadam. I am from the US team, and I will be um, 
I'll be reviewing the, what the, both the reporter and the opponent have said, as well as suggesting some further um, points that can be taken from this. Um, so first of all, if we start with uh, um, if we start with what was discussed by the reporter, they began with a very in-depth um, uh, statement about three regimes and went to some molecular level uh, to show some strong understanding of the foundations, fundamental level of what is consti constituting the sand, and then went on to show why that was relevant um, in terms of the interactions, uh, and from that, finding an equation for the maximum height uh, based on the function of the size of the grains. They then went on to discuss the packing uh, fraction, and from this, they came up with an interesting uh, conclusion of a minimum and a maximum theoretical bound. Um, they then proceeded to go into a slightly more depth about growth dynamics and some more uh, technical aspects, including granular dimensions. Uh, from here, they were able to determine a different and um, more specific uh, function for height in terms of time. Uh, they also then proceeded to go to more of the experimental aspect, from which they showed us a medium a specific value for their height for two separate situations. Um, after this, there was a very interesting exploration of the rate of the fall of grain, as well as the influence of the grain size upon the formation of the sandcastles and the stalagmites. Um, in terms of addressing the main task, the, the reporter did a, a very good job of identifying two primary, excuse me, two primary parameters and then from there, further on, exploring three types of tension. But as was mentioned by the opposition, they did fail to describe their experimental setup to some degree. And as was further, uh, further inquired, there was no, no uh, specific use of the angle data in their uh, approximations. The opposition itself had a very concise and very perceptive um, summary of the reporter's uh, presentation in terms of the strengths and the weaknesses. There were quite a, there were uh, several conflicts in terms of how the sandcastle shape was built, but that was clarified. And there was a great deal of agreement within the discussion aspect. Um, and there was also agreement as to how the height behaves as a function of time. Um, beyond that, there seems to be some conflict which should be interesting to discuss, excuse me, discuss considering the technicalities of the experiment and how the other parameters themselves can be uh, explored. Um, the opposition then went on to outline several parameters that they considered to be more important or of worth, including the um, type of sand being used and the depth of the container, as well as the cross-section cross of the hole that is used in the vessel. Um, and from here, I think it would also be beneficial to consider, um, excuse me, to consider the conditions of the water themselves that affect the capillary action. Um, so we're going back again to the molecular level. Yeah. Okay. So one thing we could do that was uh, in order to explain, for example, uh, the how water itself would behave in different uh, regimes. We can, for example, change the the uh, ten, uh, the the gamma. What's the gamma? The, uh, I forgot the surface tension. Surface tension, for example, of the water. But we didn't manage to do that experimentally because uh, imagining uh, building one liter sand. Uh, uh, sand castles bearing the surface tension, so it was really hard for us to do. So this is why we didn't do that. And do you have any thoughts on to uh, how affecting that parameter itself would influence uh, your data and whether it's worth doing? Uh, surface tension. Um, yeah, the surface yes. tension. Uh, I think that uh, as the water increases surface tension, uh, it will uh, lead to the increase of the maximum height. But uh, for example, I think that uh, as we change the temperature, for example, of water, uh, we can uh, we can get uh, another height. Uh, indeed, so I think that this parameter uh, is relevant, but another parameter which is, uh, uh, takes place in this report, uh, I think that uh, also they will change with the temperature and another parameters, uh, which may lead to the change of height. Sure. And yeah. you yeah. Said, do you also consider the temperature of the water to be of important value to this problem? Well, and how uh, did you decide we can consider not? that because whenever you change the temperature of the water, you're also dealing with the surface tension. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that would have uh, an effect, but since we had other parameters to observe, we mm -hmm. sticked to what we could change and what we could do. Right. Uh, um, so between the two, uh, was there any, um, so obviously you have heard what parameters they considered most important, specifically the two primary ones. Were there any other parameters that you would say are more important, or is there uh, any? 
which limits the height of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the pile. Uh, I think that uh, with, the, with the push and force at this point, right. uh, due to mass rates, the uh, very important parameters, the uh, coefficient of drag friction and also co collision coefficient, which depends on the, on the concentration of water and other parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that it's really important to investigate the dependence of these parameters on the uh, on different uh, as we change the different uh, no, sizes of the of the grains and uh, yeah. how they affect them. Uh, I should example, just comment on that because you you said that for example you, we didn't take the the cross section, but uh, what I meant by measuring different uh, uh, cues that I've shown there was mm -hmm. actually dealing with this uh, section too. So uh, in fact we can have obtain that. Yeah, we didn't I, use for example uh, one tube and then. We, uh, we were varying the tube and then. Yeah, uh, I'm asking about uh, like as you change the cross section of the tube, you also change the velocity of pouring of the sand. Yeah. Uh, what happens if we change the cross section but the velocity remains the same? Uh, like, Do you uh, have any thoughts on that? Ah, okay. Uh, so, uh, if you, as I said before, uh, and as we have shown experimentally. Or just velocity without changing of. Whenever, whenever you have more velocity of sand, it will grow less. It will not grow the same. But if you pour it, for example, one by one, then you have the possibility of the sand castle uh, falling more. Uh, but this also is due to the probability function, uh, probability uh, mm -hmm. pattern of this uh, grain that is here to, to get here. So whenever you have, for example, uh, a small, uh, a bigger cross-section area, mm -hmm. perhaps you can achieve also the, the size of the sand castles. And whenever you have them sticking here, perhaps they will, uh, the torque, the right. gravitational torque that yep. will lead to the ground, yep. perhaps is more than the, the capillary cell right. effect. Right. So this is um, why you, you could have Ukraine, smaller you heights. Um, you know, looking at the experimental data and the errors that were also found, do you consider the error calculation to be adequate in this situation? Uh, I think yes. That, uh, okay. for, for example, the reporter uh, may improve his experimental setup to get lower, uh, lower error and to investigate this more precisely. Uh, also, I wanted to ask about uh, you. You have in your theory is uh, some coefficient of sticking of, uh, of grains uh, to the to the pile. Uh, for example, as we change the temperature, uh, we may get the vapor uh, around the uh, uh, around the pile, and thus so the maize the sticking coefficient changes due to, uh, for example, uh, for another humidity or another uh, parameters of the system. Wow, uh, I really. Well, I haven't thought about that, for example, increasing temperature and then varying the vapor around the stuff, because uh, experimentally, we, we had some uh, challenges to face, which were to change some of the parameters at all. So this is why we haven't thought about it. But, I see. Uh, sure. And I don't think we have a it will no, have uh, much influence mm -hmm. at all. Uh, do you say? Um, uh, during the discussion, you guys quickly brushed over um, uh, the, the speed at which the sand falls. Um, why exactly would a higher speed of fall decrease the size of the sand castle? Uh, because imagine, uh, this is what they call, uh, for example, in, in the paper, papers we had read, uh, a ballistic regime. So whenever you have a many, many, many uh, sands falling, at, grains of sand falling at the same time, uh, you, you wouldn't have, uh, for example, this, this water that's down here, it needs to, to go up. It doesn't go, it doesn't get wet instantly. So you would have to consider the water rise and the time that it takes for it to rise in order to do that. So this is why it makes sense also to diminish the time in which, in which you're pouring. You know? So uh, in the paper we have read, uh, he, like, the, this rate was really, really small, but we didn't manage to, to do exactly like that. Yeah. But something I would like to, to comment here also is that uh, experimentally, in what they did, they also, in this other paper, they, they uh, had a tube, and then they changed, as I said before, that the water concentration is important. What they did was changing the water concentration in here, and then they were pouring it. Uh, the sand castle above it, and this is how you obtain, for example, this dependency right. on that, uh, on how There's, it is. If but you could field another question, ah, okay. sorry to cut you off. Ah, well, okay, I was just trying to make another point. Can you try to vary the uh, distance between the vessel and the tower? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you decrease the, the distance, the tower will be higher. 
Yeah, we haven't done that because the problem states that we have to do it for a height of 42 centimeters. Now, imagine if the problem had stated, it's hadn't stated that we would do what? 40 centimeters, so I think it would be raised as a height if you try to uh, does the opponent have anything they'd like to say about this topic? Uh, like, uh, yes, I agree with my team member. Like, uh, as we uh, as we move the, the tube with, with, the, with the tower, we indeed observe, we, we indeed get the much less push and force. I believe there was a question. So, so here, right, that uh, the greater the velocity, uh, the more chance it to the, the crystal will scatter rather than stick to the pile. So this is the, the reason. Like higher velocities are like more likely to have a small height instead of. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. Thank you. About your theoretical study, so you could you please open a few slides before where you and solve an equation for growing of for water between between two different particles. Yeah, like this one. This so one. So how do you estimate the length uh, between these particles? The distance between two particles. Uh, the distance between two particles. Uh, now, we didn't. Uh, what we did was uh, in the literature, you have a lot of investigations according to that. But even there, it is really hard to find uh, measurements in that matter. So it's a challenge even for geotechnical engineering That's stuff. No, we we did not estimate. Uh, for example, what we're considering here is the, for example, that the the grain. Uh, we, we consider the distance between two grains by being the, the radius of the grain itself, for example, and the water that it's between in those two grains. And all grains have the same size. Yeah, yeah. In our experimental setup, uh, by doing the granulometry, we can guarantee that they are practically the same size. Okay. And this is why. And this gives us an idea of how it depends uh, on the distance. Also, uh, in your report, you had uh, dependence of concentration, something like not uh, is, uh, something like this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this parameter uh, H naught uh, uh, does it depend on uh, main parameters of the problem, and like for, uh, what is the better uh, parameters for to get the, the higher. Uh, the lower this uh, coefficient. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, maybe I'm a bit old fashioned, but what is about this paper you're talking about so much? Oh, you, uh, I write a you want to see it? Yes. I want uh, to understand what kind of reference it is, yes. Yeah, okay, I so. I want to know what uh, is it? The paper is. This one here, uh, these are just some of the main points I've highlighted. But it's sculpting can send castles grain by grain. Uh, and in this setup, he like establishes that a cylinder must uh, grow. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. Do you don't mind if another question? Go. OK. Uh, some part of your theory leads you to the estimate of height between 7 and 20 centimeter. Yeah. And I Get a bit lost. Where did you use this number, this estimation next? How did you use this result next in your theory or wherever? Well, yeah, well, actually, uh, that was just for example. This theory that of a capillary tube is a really wide open uh, approximation. And what we were trying to see there with, uh, with those two values if, is was that if what we were measuring uh, and we as physicists, we're considering that the capillary is really important. Uh, we were trying to see whether this height, uh, these heights predicted, for example, uh, with this theory, could be in the range of our experimental range. So this is why uh, we did that approximation. Then uh, this is why I can say that uh, the capillary effect is really important too. Thank you. Thank you. So you said at one point that um, <clears throat> the packing fraction will depend on the size. If I buy, say, a thousand golf balls and a thousand volleyballs, which are much bigger, are you telling me I can't assemble them in the same packing fraction? How, how does that depend on the size of the spheres? I know, no, not, not, not on the size of the spheres. Sorry if uh, I led you to understand that, but uh, actually, the the, sand, the, the water. Uh, the water between those grains will, will be different. So uh, what I'm telling you is that uh, 
the, the sand castle is rising, so the water is rising too, but they, it's not an instantaneous effect, so you have some time for this water to reach here. So this is why the, the pack infraction changes itself. So whenever you have a dry sand, you do not have that kind of cohesion that would lead us to another aspect of the problem. So this is why I, I wanted to clear out. Not that the pack infraction itself would change, just the water concentration. Uh, if you must say one number, what is the maximum height you can get? Well, yeah. in this problem with 40 centimeters and 2 centimeters of water and 1 liter of sand, this particular problem is in the statement of the Experimentally, uh, we managed to get 16 centimeters of, of height. But what do you mean by maximum height? Is it the height of uh, the base included? Uh, or is it the tip also included, or just this size? It, um, well, we managed to get 16 centimeters from top until onto the tip. And theoretically? Well, theoretically we didn't have, uh, theoretically we had that, considering the capillary tube approximation, we had that it, was, it would be between seven and 20 centimeters. But uh, actually a good point. Uh, the maximum is then 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But considering, uh, the maximum height that could be achieved with the same, uh, with different sandcastle sizes, uh, uh, grains of, of, of sand. Yeah. Thank you. But, but it's, it's really hard to make all measurements and all the experiments. So this is why we weren't able to isolate each of those. You evidence the uh, importance of the packing fraction. And you, you, now you, you also evidence the, the, that this packing fraction varies as a, as a function of the amount of water. So uh, first of all, did you try to measure this packing fraction? And how, what was, if, if you did? Yeah. Was your experimental method? Yeah, Since yeah. Since you know the particle size. Yeah, no, we, we tried to do that, for example. One important thing to do was, for example, if you fill in a tube and then you measure uh, you put on the sand inside of it, and you know how what, the, the densities and, and everything. But uh, we had a limited amount of sand of each of those uh, sizes. So this is, I mean, we could lose some of the some of those uh, sands in the middle. So this is why we are unable to to capture that uh, experimentally. But one important thing to say is that even though we did not have uh, the backing fraction itself, this height here in our equation, it will depend on, on the backing fraction as well as on the saturation. So indirectly, uh, by making these uh, measurements and extrapolating for, uh, for the limit we would like to study, we can find what approximately this uh, would be. Okay, but not specifically the back and fracture because that's really hard to be to do. Actually, we also try to do uh, an X-ray experiment in order to know uh, in which peaks by knowing the composition of sand. So to know the back and fraction based on the diffraction parameters. But uh, that was uh, well, we did experiments, but since we did not know exactly what kind of sand we're dealing with and the type of materials, that was really hard to obtain. This is why we can't say, oh, this back and fraction is this one. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Matthias. And the other participants, and we'll give them a, a clap. <laughs>